Now, I have been misrepresented before. My YouTube channel is mainly focused on apologetics and theology and things like that. So I want to talk about climate change. And I have five things to say from a Christian perspective, particularly. I care about it so much, I, I think we can't not talk about it. It's just too important. The climate affects everything. Now, it is true, as people often point out, that climate change is extremely common and kind of a kind of severe throughout Earth's history. So you can go back to times, I think it was like around 50 million years ago, there's basically no ice anywhere. And you've got, you know, islands near the North Pole with huge trees and the annual mean temperature at the North Pole 50 million years ago is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you can find other times where the, there's ice ages and it's really, really cold. So the temperature does vary naturally. It's just good to observe, first of all, that there is pretty much a scientific consensus or a, a very close to a scientific consensus on human-caused climate change as a very real problem. If you're going to go against a near consensus in the scientific community, study it and make sure that that's a wise thing to do. Because I see a lot of people reacting instinctively rather than really hitting the books. And uh, I don't think that that's a responsible posture for Christians to take. Basic idea of climate change is not only extremely well supported in the scientific community, it's also very intuitive and commonsensical and basic. You've got a lot more people alive today. Going back to the principles of just basic wisdom and planning, we have to think about how do we do that? How do, how do we manage that? You know, Where might that put a strain on resources and so forth? And here's the main problem. It's not the number of human beings, though that can contribute to what is the main problem, and that's the technological advances since the Industrial Revolution have dramatically altered how we relate to the environment. And to put it really simply, we have forms of technology that consume huge amounts of what are called fossil fuels. So uh, f sources of energy like uh, coal, natural gas, petroleum, things like this. And we use these to power our cars and our homes and our airplanes and so forth. And in so doing, they emit greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, especially carbon dioxide. Huge increases in emissions of greenhouse gases. The reason that's a problem is because, first of all, greenhouse gases stay in the atmosphere forever, practically. But basically, they trap more heat energy from the sun. So it's like putting more blankets on at night. You can observe the greenhouse effect at the local level. Very easy. It's, it's, no, it's not in dispute as such. From 2007 on, every other scientific body of national or international standing agrees that human-caused global warming is a serious problem. So the, the level of conspiracy and hoax it would be if somehow all of these different... People, people think this, that scientists are all together. People have this distrust of science. Science is an inherently conservative process. And um, these people are not all in cahoots with each other, you know? Um, if somebody could disprove this, there'd be much incentive to do that. And yet you have so much agreement in the scientific community. And some of the things are obvious, like you think of sea level rise. Other things you may not think of right away. But even just sea level rise is a big deal. 11 out of the uh, 15 largest cities in the world are on coastal estuaries. So you can see this happening already. It's not like a distant hypothesis. You see it happening in places like New Orleans or Venice. You also have more intense hurricanes because they are fueled by the warmer waters in the summer. You have more wildfires, which I live in Southern California. I can tell you how devastating those are, partly because of drought, but also because of drier air. The oceans become more acidic as ice melts and other uh, other forms of pollution. You know, richer countries like the United States, which we consume so much per capita, it's embarrassing how much we consume. We won't face the direct effects as much, probably, as other places in the world. If you are pro-life, you should care about climate change because when there is a drought or a famine in a poor country, people die. The particular beliefs of Christianity, the particular worldview that is inculcated by the Christian gospel 
is one that should naturally incline us to care about issues of stewardship and sustainability and responsible usage of resources and things like that. I'm just deeply concerned that there is an anti-science mentality that evangelicals often have. Um, and then there's just basic principles that all Christians believe in that play into an issue like climate change, wisdom in planning for the future, um, opposition to greed, uh, contentment and valuing simplicity and modesty of lifestyle. You think of Proverbs 38, which says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Second of all, the basic principle of love your neighbor, uh, issues of environmental stewardship and particularly climate change have been associated with political liberalism and evangelicals have tended to be politically conservative. And I think that is the biggest single factor for why more Christians aren't more active in kind of leading the charge on something like climate change. And I'm not trying to scare people with this. That's not the motive, but it's just trying to be accurate. And we need to understand what a big deal this is. I just think that a big part of how we're going to make progress is spreading more knowledge and making this more of just something that's out on the table that we're thinking about, that we're aware of. Now, I'm aware that that's not all we need to do, of course. Um, in fact, that's one tiny thing compared to everything we need to do. If people would just you know, do some research about it and then have an opinion, that alone is because all change starts in the hearts and minds of people. It just seems like it's one of those issues that should be way high on the level of urgency.